Hey everyone, Digital David here. Today in this video, I'm gonna be unboxing and reviewing the Tac Life table saw. This is a 10 inch, 15 amp table saw with 45 degree bevel. They did send me this product to review, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product and wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in my video description below. I've also reviewed a lot of other Tac Life products on my channel, so be sure to check out some of those videos. You can see how it comes packaged to you right here with the very simple retail box. There's the model number for your reference. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and look at the package contents. Here are some of the package contents. First up, you can see we have our user guide and manual right here, complete with step-by-step -step setup instructions for you, walking you through complete installation and assembly. They also have their contact information on the back if you ever have any questions. You can see we have a lot of parts for the stand right here that the table saw will rest on. We have some select tools as well and a bag full of nuts, bolts, and washers. Now you can see we have our bottom cover right here, some of our guides and our blade cover. Now you can see the two table extensions that are included. They're already greased for us and ready to be installed. Last but not least, the table saw itself right here with our blade and bevel adjustments and our on and off buttons on the other side. Now let's go ahead, let's get everything assembled. To install the guides, go ahead, take both pieces that you see here. You're gonna slide this in, so gently work it in. Once you have it slid in how far you want it to go, you're gonna go ahead and then just tighten down these on the back end. So now we have our parallel guide tightened up and ready to be used on the table saw. Same can be said for the angle guide as well. So you can see we have two bolts right there. Go ahead and line them up. You're gonna line them up right here on both of those sides and just work them down into the grooves. Once you have them down in the grooves like that, then you can go ahead, you can adjust it how you want it and then tighten them down the rest of the way. Just finger tight is fine. So get them tightened up and now you're ready to use the angle guide as well. To attach and install the blade protective cover, it just slides on right here on that side. So raise the blade up until you can see the cutout in the metal. Then line everything up and just gently work it back and into place as you see here. Now it rests on the device and it's ready to be used, keeping you safe while you make your cuts. So to install the stand and legs, go ahead for the first step, attach the four feet to the bottom of the four legs. So you can see we have a leg right here. Go ahead, just attach the rubber foot right in place. Line everything up, push it in. Make sure it's tight and secure. And there we go, we have the first foot installed. Repeat that for the next three legs. So now that the feet are installed, we're ready to attach the pieces to start assembling the legs and base. So we have two different pieces marked B. We have a shorter piece and a longer piece right here, and we have two of each of the pieces. Pay attention to how we have the first shorter piece mark B installed. So we have a shorter metal lip up top and a longer metal lip at the bottom. Then you can see I went ahead, I already attached two of the bolts and nuts right here so you guys can see how that works. You're gonna wanna stretch them out the furthest that they can be on both sides. Insert the bolts and then attach the nuts. It helps if you have a 10 millimeter socket that will help speed up the process for installation. Then you can see with the longer piece mark B down here, Pay attention to how we have that installed as well. We have the shorter piece at the top and the longer piece at the bottom for the length. They are not equal, so be sure to follow it just like you see right here. Get the attached nuts installed with the bolts. So you can see we have two bolts up here, two bolts up there, one bolt up here, and one bolt right there. You just need to go ahead and follow the same pattern for each one. So insert the bolt from the back side. So we can do that right here. Insert it from the back side, push it firmly into place. Then you're always gonna have the washer go first, then your lock washer, and then the included nut. Get it going finger tight, and then you can go ahead and you can use the socket to tighten it down the rest of the way. Now you can see that we got one side assembled. Repeat that exact same process for the other side. Now we're ready to attach our A pieces. You can see we have two different A pieces right here. We have a shorter A piece up top, with a short metal lip at the very top. Then we have our longer piece at the bottom with our shorter side at the top and our longer side at the bottom right there. Now we just need to attach it to the frames we already built. So take the nuts, washers, and bolts and slide them and attach them through. Two on each side, so four up top, and then one on each side 
at the bottom. Now you can see we have it installed for both sides. Now we have to repeat that step for the other side. Now you can see we got the stand installed. You may have to make some final adjustments and tweaks once you actually set the table saw on this. At this stage, let's go ahead, let's attach the two remaining brackets to the back of the legs. So you can see we got one of the back caster brackets installed right here. You wanna install these on the back side of the table saw. So the side opposite of where you have the levers to adjust the blade height and the bevel. Now you can see we got the other caster bracket installed right here and we're ready to attach the table saw to the stand. So now we fasten the table saw to the base of the stand. You can see the last remaining eight bolts are what we use, two in each corner. It's best to do this upside down so you're able to get everything installed properly and make any sort of adjustments that you may have to to the frame to make sure all the holes line up. So to attach the back cover to the table saw, you have to fasten four screws, one on each of the spots on the saw. So you can take the cover right here, you can see it, line everything up, screw them in place with a Phillips head screwdriver, gently tighten them down. Once you have it tight in place, repeat that process for the remaining three screws. So now we're ready to install the extensions on both sides of the table. Go ahead, remove the bolts you see right here. It's a Phillips head screw on each side of these long poles. Then you're gonna push the poles through, one on each side, right here. And you can see we gotta feed through this one and this one. Then you can attach that screw again right there, and then you can tighten it into place if you want, right here with those knobs. So that levels it up for you, and it keeps it nice and snug. We can loosen that back down, and you can see we can pull and slide it out with ease. Here's a quick look at the table saw with the extensions fully extended. On the front of the saw, you can see we have our off and on switch right here. We also have our blade adjustment and our bevel adjustment from zero degrees all the way up to 45 degrees. On the back of the saw, you can see we have a dust extraction nozzle. So we went ahead and stuck just your standard shop vac hose right into the back of the saw. On this side of the table saw, you can see we have built-in tool storage. On the top of the saw, you can see we have our angle guide right here that we can slide and push along. And then we can loosen up on the handle and we can adjust the angle accordingly from zero degrees all the way to 45 degrees on either side, depending on what we're trying to cut. Then you can see we have our nice blade cover and protector right there. And we have our parallel guide on this side that's very easy to loosen, move, and then reattach in place. To change and remove the saw blade, go ahead, loosen up the three screws on this panel, gently pull it out of place. That will reveal the blade. Then take two of the included tools, your Allen wrench and this hex wrench. You're gonna put the hex wrench on first, then the Allen wrench, and you're gonna go ahead, you're gonna line everything up, and you're gonna pull them away from each other to loosen it, and that will free this up so you can remove it and take the blade out. When you're done installing your new blade, go ahead, Repeat that process in the reverse order. Push them together and pass each other to tighten. And now your blade is secure, ready to go. And now you can put this panel back on and secure those three screws. So before making any cuts with the saw, make sure you reference the user guide and manual for proper safety, care, and precautions to take when operating the saw. In this case, we have some hearing protection right here and some safety eyewear glasses as well. Don't forget to use the included tool as well as you handle the wood that you'll be cutting with the saw. Now let's go ahead and let's try it out. So you can see the cut right there. We can go ahead and remove it. It's a very straight and flush cut. You can see the cut right there, very flush and straight as well.
So we just cut that long piece of trim. You can see the cut right there. You can look at it from this side. This is the cut side. Now you can see it from the other side. This is the cut side. Now we can look at the other piece that we cut. Here's the cut side right here. And we can flip it around so you can see the cut side right here. So we just cut a 45 degree angle right there using our angled guide on this board. So we cut a 45 degree angle with this piece of trim using the table saw. You can see how it looks right there from all the different sides and angles. You can see our 45 degree bevel cut right there. Really nice angle, smooth flush cut. We can see it from that side and from the other side. So you can see that 45 degree angle. And we can look at it from the cut piece right there. Flip it around and we can put it back together as well. So you can see it's a nice flush 45 degree cut. So we were able to cut this piece of trim with a 45 degree bevel cut right there. You can see the cut, very accurate. Here's the cut piece as well too, so you can check that out. And then they fit right back together right there. And here's a 22 and a half degree bevel cut for you on this piece of trim. We ripped the board the long ways right there. So you can check it out from the cut side right here on the cut piece. You can see it from this side as well. Then we have our other piece right here. You can see the cut side. See it from that angle and from that side as well. When you're finished using the saw, clean up some breeze with the built-in cord storage. So after spending some time using this Tack Life table saw, I gotta say it's definitely geared for somebody like myself who just wants a table saw for light DIY work around the house. I'm not a craftsman, I'm not a carpenter, and I'm not a contractor. It may work great for you and your needs if you fall into those categories, but it's definitely geared towards somebody like myself who just wants to use it for occasional projects that I'll tackle around the house. So I'm very happy to have it in my tool arsenal. And after using it, I gotta say, there's a couple things I'd like to see improved upon. One is you can just never have too long of a cord. Six and a half feet is great, but I'd love to see 10, 12, 15 feet would be phenomenal. Now I know most of you might have an outlet nearby in your garage, basement, wood shop, wherever you're gonna be using this. And if you don't, chances are you probably have an extension cord, but I'd love to see an even longer power cord. Everything in regards to the saw works great, very easy to change the blades. The bevel cut was nice and we did get a nice straight cut. Now here's the second thing I wanna point out though that I really, really, really want them to change in the future and that's the parallel guide. So compared to my old Ryobi saw that had a parallel guide that clamped on both sides, if you notice this one only goes about three quarters of the way. So there's a little bit of give towards the end. So a centimeter, two centimeters, whatever, depending on the pressure that you're applying, there is a slight give and I really don't like that. The OCD and perfectionism in me wants to see that corrected in the future. So an easy way for me to do that is just buy another guide. But this is a great kit, guys, with everything right in the box and right out of the packaging for you. So it would be nice not to be able to have to go to the store and buy another guide. You might already have another guide, and that might not be that big of a deal. And that one's going to be good enough for most of your cuts. But keep in mind, I did notice with that guide that came in my box, since it doesn't clamp on the other end, there's just not that much strength out on the very end so it does have a little bit of give well that concludes our video thank you so much for watching don't forget the product link will be in our video description below please go ahead check it out and do your shopping from there any purchase made through that link helps support our channel at no additional cost to you so we're really grateful and thankful for all of your support while you're at it can you go ahead and hit that like button for us and subscribe to our channel. We have new content coming out daily and we don't want you to miss anything. Please go ahead and give us a follow online and make it a clean sweep. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, 
TikTok, Discord. You can message us on WeChat, check out our website and join our free newsletter. Thank you guys so much for being here. Don't forget new content daily and we can't wait to see you in our next video.